Okay, okay. Talk about, uh, first off, talk about this today. The uh, did, did you think there was going to be like a long line? You'd be here for three hours or whatever it was? And I, did, I didn't realize coming in this appearance that it was going to take three hours to get through this entire line of ramp fans. But, you know, when, you, when the Booster Club gets together and there's so many fans in Southern California for, for the Rams, uh, I mean, when, when a player makes an appearance, they all show up in big numbers. So it, it was kind of surprising a little bit that the line was as long as it was, to be honest with you, today. Okay. All right, so I have six questions, one down. All right, talk about your wine uh, and, and, and give me the story because you, you talked about your daughters and your name. Talk about that and how did you get into that? Well, the wine thing has always been kind of a, a fun hobby for me because when I was when I retired, I, of course, uh, being Italian that I am and the Italian food that we like to eat at home, uh, at, obviously, you know, I'm a wine enthusiast because of the nature of wine with food, and it makes the food taste better. The food makes the wine taste better, and and so I eventually got my sommelier lessons, and I started doing a little bit of that, and I did a lot of, you know, just I just loved it, and. And then I said, well, let me grow some grapes. So I started growing grapes in my backyard, and we, and we started producing, you know, Sangiovese grapes and Cabernet grapes. And one of my favorite wines was Tignanello, which was an Antonori, a super Tuscan wine from Italy. And so we decided to pattern our wine a little bit after that because we liked it so much, and it's a great food-friendly wine. Uh, we grow the grapes right at, in my home in Orange Park. And I named it after the wine we named after my three daughters, Cara, Vanessa, and Jenna. And so it's called Caressa J. And so we've had a couple of vintages, and uh, the latest one was very, very good. And we hope the futures will, will be very good as well. But it's been pretty well received. We don't make a lot, so we're a boutique winery. But it's uh, a very food-friendly wine. goes with a lot of the food that my wife does cook at home. So she cooks a lot with the you know, the vegetarian dishes, because I have a vegetarian daughter, <laughs> that's all she eats, so we have the pasta with that, and, or with veal, and, and those kind of things, but it goes, it's very good wine, C complements a lot of different kind of food. Is there a website or something people can go to? Well, there will be. Okay, okay. <laughs> we will have Tenuta di Ferragamo pretty soon, and it's, uh, we do have the website um, already registered, okay. so it's tenutadiferragamo.org or .com. Okay, They'll let me know when you have that all together. Sure. Hey, I want, I want to talk about your career with the Rams because basically it was broken into two. You had the Coliseum career and you had the Anaheim Stadium career. In, in between there, you were in Canada for a year or two. Mm -hmm. Talk about the vibe at the Coliseum because you, I mean, what was it like at the Coliseum? Well, the Coliseum always had all those years of history with the Rams being there. And, of course, SC and UCLA played there on Saturdays, you know, when, when, I, when we played years ago. And, uh, you know, I just remember coming out of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the with the uh, back in the locker rooms, we we before our games, we'd have a lot of the the Hollywood personalities and a lot of comics, and they would come into the locker room, and it was kind of it was really fun to see them because they were cracking jokes and you know lightening the the whole atmosphere up. And then we walked down the tunnel, then you'd hit the field, and it just all the history that was in the tradition that they had with the Coliseum, it just brought the best out of you when you hit the field and then you look up in the stands and there's 80 to 100,000 people cheering for you. So it was, it was, it was pretty dramatic, it was pretty, uh, you know, pretty exciting to, to run on that field. It's kind of like being at a Laker or Dodger game nowadays, I guess, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's just the, the excitement, you know, the Los Angeles fans have been great. Mm -hmm. and we have, you know, great following of, of football fans, mm -hmm. basketball fans, baseball fans, ho now hockey. Sure. And so it's, uh, it's, it's sad to see that we don't have a team here now. Right. So talk about Anaheim, because that was a completely different vibe. It wasn't Hollywood any longer. So what was that like compared to running out of a tunnel in the Coliseum, running out in Anaheim? Well, Anaheim had its own, you know, it, it was a baseball stadium designed for baseball, and they converted it to football, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the track and the field was, was excellent. It mm -hmm. was a really nice turf. We loved playing on it. Mm -hmm. It was fast, um, but the fans were on top of the game, which we like as a player. You want the fan participation, and they're real close. Right. The Coliseum was a little detracted. There was, there was a little bit of separation between the field and the stadium. So, but, I mean, in Anaheim, I mean, you know, they, they, they cheered as loud as they did in the Coliseum. Right. I mean, it, it wasn't the same feel coming on the field, but once you got out there and played, it was, it was you know, was it support. Was it still kind of like a Hollywood vibe, or was it a different vibe? Because I know that when they were moving down there, a lot of the L.A. writers said they're the Disneyland Rams. So, what was it? Because you, you, you guys lost, really, the metro L.A. market. And the Raiders took advantage of that for a little while. So, what was that like? I mean, the the vibe 
compared to the Coliseum as, as far as like you said it was like being at a Laker game well we I mean we, we couldn't see the Hollywood Hills from Anaheim Stadium like we could from the Coliseum right. but um, and and you had a little bit more association with the movie stars and stuff with because it was closer to Hollywood right and it was right down closer to downtown but we were in Orange County we were in suburbia but we were still the Rams uh, but I, I think that uh, you know the, the the fan support was the same. Mm -hmm. It's just that the the interest. I mean, we're still covered by all the networks. They, sure. they had to travel a little bit farther to come to Orange County, which they didn't really care to mm -hmm. do. But um, you know, they they followed us intently. But it it was a little different feel. But again, it was a different surrounding because we were in Orange County. We were in a different stadium, mm -hmm. but we we're still the Rams. We right. still wore the, the horns on our helmets. So it was always the same. And of course, I covered you there, which is awesome. Yeah. But um, let me ask you, I asked you this last night, uh, what, what's it like to go to St. Louis? And, because I spoke to Deacon about that a few years ago, and he looked at me, and, and I'll just say it like he said. He said, Eric, the only thing the people in St. Louis know, know me for is for kicking Jim Hart's ass. What, talk, about, talk about going to St. Louis, because obviously it's kind of, it's, it's a strange feeling, isn't it? Uh, in, a, in a way it is because I mean you're still the Rams and, and, and people still want to cheer for the Rams no matter where they're at but you know as a player and when you play I played in Los Angeles right. and my home base was LA and so the fans who came and cheered for us were here and so I was recognized on the field in the heroics that we did was on the field in, in Southern California uh, we weren't home based in St. Louis so when I went back to St. Louis to be recognized it was not the same feel I mean I'm on the field I'm you know in Ram country but it's Ram it's a t it's a territory that's like foreign yeah. because it's in a different Sp space. I didn't play in that stadium. Right. Um, and if you did, you were basically the enemy. When right. We, we played St. Louis. We beat St. Louis there. But it was on a, even at a different field than they had in the in the TWA dump. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's you know it's different. I mean it's just a different feel altogether. And I can and probably other players have sensed the same thing. Right. You know, and they would cheer louder for the players that played in St. Louis, and they would cheer for L.A. Rams that were being featured in, in St. Louis. Right. And I think the same would be if they were in L.A. again. If they were to come back, I think we would hear a little bit more cheering here for some of the old guys that played in L.A. Sure. That they would remember them. Yeah. I, I asked Jack some of these same questions, and when I asked him about playing in the Coliseum, he said, when we played in the Coliseum, we were rock stars, and they just don't know that in St. Louis. So I... Everybody, everybody, it's the same sentiment, I guess, just different A different faces, feel, yeah. a different feel, right, different yeah. faces. Um, yeah. You know, you still have the same, the same name, but sure. a different city. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, I was born and raised in Southern California. I'm kind of a, a local boy here, yeah. so it's, uh, it's, it's always good to be here. And I, I wanted to ask you about this Stan Kroenke buying 60 acres. What do you think? And, you know, he's... He's an owner of a team, and he's looking. You know, he's buying land here. What does that What does that mean for you? Well, I think it's a good sign for yeah. for Ram fans, yeah. especially here in Southern California, because I mean, when you when you have an owner of a team that's buying property in a city that you would suspect that maybe they might be a chance of moving here, I mean, it's a positive sign, obviously. Uh, whether it happens or not, you know, remains to be seen. There's a lot of issues that need to be worked through, and then you know, if in fact the, you know the NFL has has granted permission for a team to move to LA as mm -hmm. the first step if they did I'm sure I'm sure they probably would mm -hmm. I mean they wouldn't prevent a team from moving but then the logical choice would be the Rams to move back because they were here 50 years mm -hmm. I mean it's almost like part of a long, long tradition so the natural the the thing that sounds seems like the normal thing that should happen would be the Rams should come back mm -hmm. and uh, if they are going to move St. Louis I think the Rams would be number one on the list all right, I'm going to give you a scenario and you tell me what you think. The Rams are here, they come back, 2015, opening game. They bring you, Jack Youngblood, Fred Dreyer, Leroy Irvin, Harold Jackson, John Capaletti, um, Wendell Tyler, Eric Dickerson. Honor you before Jackie the game. Ja ja but, yeah. Talk exactly. about what that would feel like. I get goosebumps just thinking about that. Well, I, I think um, if they do, you know, if and when they do come back, mm -hmm. I think a lot of those guys will be associated with the team. And they should make that associate a stronger association and have more of an alumni participation 
and that kind of brings the spirit, the tradition back, not only to the players, but to the fans too, because the fans really relate to the players, as you've seen today. I mean, they still remember. I mean, I play ball in Nebraska. Those fans remember players from 30, 50 years ago, 80 years ago. Same with Ram fans, you know, in, in Southern California. They remember guys of the past. So they want, they, they feel connected yeah. when, when they're here or they're associated in some way, whether it be a PR or, um, you know, doing something with the team, maybe helping out with the, you know, the media or being part of the media or right. being part of the coaching staff mm -hmm. or being an honorary member of some sort, you know, maybe make an honorary membership. I, I think based on the history of the Rams here, you got, you're, you guys are more like family members to, to a lot of these people. So uh, it, it, for me, you guys are like family members because I, I was brought up in that whole, you know, the whole vibe. There. It does seem like a family, yeah. yeah and yeah. that's the way when we played, we were, we were a close-knit group and yeah. it was kind of like family. Yeah. You know, everybody just played for each other, yeah, not just for yourself. Absolutely. Last question, last night, you, you some quick plays that you remember. You, you obviously remember the Wadi playing. You, you said he was there. And talk about some of the two, your two favorite plays that you remember the most from that year. Well, Lionel Taylor, you know, had, had come from, and Bud Carson came from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And we eventually played Pittsburgh in the Super Bowl game. And they brought a lot of knowledge, a lot of pizzazz to our team mm -hmm. with, you know, just the, the razzmatazz kind of stuff. And we weren't just, when I, when I took over, we weren't just a team that would run the ball exclusively. We, right. would, we would throw it if right. we had to throw it deep. Mm -hmm. And by throwing it deep, we kind of stretched the field. So we made the, the, the field tougher to cover. Mm -hmm. So it made our running game a little easier. And then to make plays in the air and, and to have plays that we did from the first day of training camp to the last day of training camp and even into the Super Bowl, those are the, those are the plays you remember. So we perfected the simplistic plays, but we did them to perfection. Mm -hmm. So we were so used to running it, we could run it against any defense. And most of the time, we, if the quarterback read it right, there would be somebody open. If he didn't read it right, something disastrous would happen. So yeah. thank God I tried to read it the right way most of the time. Yeah. Is, there, is there a particular play you can describe, just one play? Well, that, that 63 pattern that we used to run, we, we had a combination of routes, and uh, that was Preston and Ard would split the post. And, and it's still run today in some fashion. Yeah. It's just that you, you're, you're stretching deep and you're coming underneath. So if they take you short, you go deep. If they go deep, you come intermediate. And then we also had a short layoff or a check down valve off of that. But Billy Waddy was coming across the play that we that we seen they'd illustrated and kind of miraculously caught the ball. The ball was tipped. They were in a prevent defense. But there was a hole. Billy found the hole and the ball got there and he took it and you know ran up the sideline. It's just one of those miraculous things that uh, are maybe not supposed to work, but it did work. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of ma magical in some ways. Mm -hmm. But uh, stuff like that happens when you go to Super Bowl games. It's like it was yesterday, huh? Yeah, it's pretty vivid. It's a, it's, it's a memory that won't ever be erased, you know, in your mind. And a lot of the guys that played and fought for fans, too, that actually saw it. Kind of a special moment. You know, it's those big, big plays. It's one play that you remember, the, the uh, Joe Montana pass right. in the end zone to Dwight Clark. And he can describe it just Throwing like the it ball was away. Yeah. I mean, if the ball was supposed to be thrown away. Yeah. And you look at the Terry Bradshaw pass that put them in their first Super Bowl, the one that was the immaculate reception right. that came back. And Franco Harris was never supposed to even be there. Right. Take the ball up on a fluke play. Picked it up, ran in for the end zone to beat Oakland. And they can describe it just like you described your Yeah, it's just like they remember they remember every step of the way. I mean, a lot of it's a blur. Mm. It happens so <laughs> fast, but that's what happens in the NFL. The speed of the game is does it is pretty fast. Yeah. And uh, but you you know it just it happens so that's why it's professional sports and that's the best thing about it. That's all I need, man. Sorry all it right. took so long there. Okay, thanks, Eric. Thank you.